have both like cast news and spoiler stuff that came out. Um, so starting with the spoilers, there's been a lot of fan photos, fan videos and stuff of them out and about filming. Um, what we think are dream sequences. The scene that people saw was them at like, um, like, I can't remember the right word for it, <laughs> um, but like right by like the water basically. And the characters, when I sent her like the pictures, I was like, the more pictures you look at this, the more insane this scene gets because it starts off as like Percy and Annabeth and like Clarice. And you're like, okay, that makes sense. And then it's like Luke and you're like, what? <laughs> and then the next person is Sally and you're like, excuse me. Yeah, Sally in the same place as Luke. And then later on, more photos came out that Tyson, Daniel, Tyson and Arian as Grover were all still were all there. But the the place that they were filming was like right by the water. And so nobody could like get like any pictures or anything like that of like the actual scene. People just kind of had photos from fans who went there filming and just took pictures of them after they were done, basically. Um, the thing I think is really interesting about this scene is that Percy is wearing different clothes, uh, and Annabeth for that matter too, than they are for the rest, for the other things we've seen of them so far. Yeah. So that makes me think like this could, I feel like there's like two options for what this scene is and either way, it's really fun to think about is that either it could be them filming the end like scene where they come back and Clarice runs away with the golden fleece and then Luke tries to kill them all. Um, but the Sally being there, I'm just like, oh my God, <laughs> like why, why is Sally there? If that's, if that's what that scene is, um, mm -hmm. that is possible. But when I saw this, I was like, I feel like this might be like Percy having like a premonition dream sort of thing um because the reason why i think that is one thing that i i don't think i ever sometimes i think things and i never say it out loud because i'm almost like afraid that they're going to do that and i don't want to like put that out to the universe or something and so one of those things that i never said was when they were talking about the character of allison the things they said about her was that she was somebody who is on luke's side who used to be at camp and that she is in like the human like mortal world mm -hmm. and so the first thing i thought of i was like if luke like messes with sally i will actually die <laughs> and and so like please no but i thought like that would be a good story and it would make sense why they would want to do that almost like watch somebody like her um mm -hmm. when she's just like outliving her best sally life and when Percy's not around. And so um, I felt like that could be possible in the way that <sighs> the thing I, I kind of wondered is another thing that they said, Rick said in an interview this week, is that he said that the flat they're going to have flashbacks like we thought they would mm -hmm. of when Luke and Thalia and Annabeth were together when they were younger. But the thing I thought was really interesting about it is that he said they were from like Annabeth's perspective mm -hmm. like not like percy necessarily seeing them but more like annabeth remembering them and them showing us annabeth remembering them and i i do think that that's kind of like a necessary thing for them to give us a lot of empathy for annabeth when throughout this season she is being terrible to tyson and like percy doesn't understand why that mm -hmm. we kind of have to have those lows like memories so that we like see why she's so scared of him before she actually says it like out loud um yeah. but with that i one thing that i remember saying this when we were reading sea of monsters is that there's like a lot of like things there's like a feeling of like anxiety <laughs> when they're on the sea of monsters in the way that they don't know what's happening at camp and they know the whole time they're gone that they're being attacked they don't know who's gonna survive and who's not they don't know if like Thalia's tree is completely dead yet and so there's this kind of this feeling of they're trying to like rush through because it's in if it feels different than the other books because the other books people at camp are okay when they're gone but this one they're not and so like it makes sense in my mind for them to take that idea and to have Percy having these dreams 
where his mom seems to be in danger with like Luke and Clarice, and especially because he isn't sure if like Clarice is somebody that he can fully trust yet. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense that he would have a dream like that and be like dreading what's going to happen when he comes back. And then at the same time, for us to be seeing these memories of that Annabeth has of Luke, where she definitely would look up to him as like her savior. Yeah. And then to be like, when they come back and run into him for the audience to be like, this is going to really suck for anyone who's read the books anyway, to know like when they come back, there's going to be this moment of um, which one is Luke going to do? Like, is he going to be the nicer person or if or is he going to be like what Percy thinks? Is he going to be like the bad person? Um, I feel like you kind of have to do that to the audience. I feel like you have to like stomp our hearts out and make us cry watching him try to kill them all because that end scene is such a betrayal to Thalia and Annabeth particularly and Grover, all the people that would be in those flashback memory scenes like mm-hmm. he is so angry that he wants to make some monsters eat Grover and Annabeth as the last thing Percy sees when he's alive because he was able to give the golden fleece to Clarice to save Thalia's tree before he got to take it and use it for Kronos. Like yeah. that scene is such a huge betrayal to all of those flashback scenes. And I almost like want them to low key traumatize their audience that way because too many people use like the whole, Oh, we're a family thing that Luke said as a way to like kind of hand wave away the things that he did. And I'm like, no, I want everyone to actually have a tiny idea of what it feels like to actually be this betrayed by somebody yeah. that you loved because it's that like him doing this stuff is that horrible. Yeah. And, and even if I cry watching it, I want, I want you to make me do that. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, where we left off with Annabeth in the end of season one, which is different than the books, of course, is that she saw the showdown go go on between Luke and Percy, and it's more dramatic in the show, for sure. What we know in the books is, yeah, she knows Percy got stung by a scorpion that Luke let loose. It's a lot mm-hmm. less um, in her face, and so this version of Annabeth is probably going to be feeling much more conflicted about what went down with Luke and how that plays into what she thought, you know, like her found family was. Yeah. And it also very well sets up stuff with Titan's curse because Luke and Titan's curse does not give a fuck about what he's doing to Annabeth. Like he, use he manipulates her emotions to force her to be tortured for and almost die for a week Mm -hmm. so if you're gonna do that then i feel like you have to make the betrayal she feels at the end like so brutal um which is kind of that storyline with like her being hard on tyson and her arguing with percy about that and also a little bit about luke in this book is like she's trying to argue so much for him just for him to try to feed her to something and watch her die (laughs) and so it's like she tries so hard and it just like blows up in her face and it's just like the best way to kind of show that like a magical version of no i can fix him no you can't (laughs) no you can't um and it it just makes it like more i guess anxiety inducing for the audience too to like wonder what is going to happen or like how even as us as people who read the books we're going to watch all those flashbacks and be in abject pain (laughs) for like every single second every single line that luke says we're just going to want to fall over and die somewhere because it's going to make it all hurt like so much more Mm -hmm. um but yeah you should do that considering who he is (laughs) yeah it's supposed to sting and i hope that like because, of course, there's always the people who are like, oh, but Charlie's hot. <laughs> like, the- I, I, I'm I, definitely never going to understand that. Are you kidding me? Like, my entire life story is like a man getting away with stuff because people just don't think he's actually that bad. Say this, we've said this many times before about Luke, but it is just true that mm-hmm. he betrays them in a way that most fandoms or like authors, whatever, they don't have the balls to do that. Yeah. And like... It would be like, I don't even know, like, well, it would be like if in Harry Potter, 
Ron was the person that was like secretly Voldemort the entire time and yeah. something like that. Or if like Frodo actually went evil in Lord of the Rings or I don't even know. I can't think of other like genres like that. Or if Ray actually went bad in Star Wars, like that's like the level of betrayal you get with Luke. And most things just don't make it that brutal where somebody's like close friend that they all trust. They all he knows all of their secrets and knows everything about them is the one that does it. Mm-hmm. So with this sort of thing, I feel like you have to make it like as painful as possible <laughs> as to almost show like how um because not to be like depressing or anything but when you have like people in like your actual life that betray you that badly that is how much it hurts yeah that is like what luke is supposed to be you do feel like you're about to die because you're so like sad that you can't even handle it and so i like showing that the tv show seems to be also going in that direction 